All right, so you're thinking about making a move to Phoenix, Arizona, and you're really trying to figure out what is truly going on with our housing market. If you read the headlines or you watch a lot of the popular real estate market videos here on YouTube, you might be confused on what to expect here in 2023. You're definitely seeing a lot of content out there uh, with people who believe a crash is coming and it's not a good time to buy. But now we're in January, rates are dropping, demand is up, and you might be hearing a different tune. But what is actually true and what makes sense for your specific situation? There are a lot of opinions out there right now, but my goal is to help you figure out what is right for you. So today I'm going to dive into some new data that you probably haven't seen they could really shed some light on what is really going on here right now and help you have some clarity on whether or not you should be thinking about buying a home in the Phoenix market. So if you think that might be helpful to you, then stay tuned. What's up, everybody? It's Greg Corbett with the AZ Lifestyle Group right here in Phoenix, Arizona. If this is your first time to this channel and you're looking to find out everything you need to know about what it's like living in and or moving to the Phoenix metro area, including everything you need to know about today's housing market, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you can be notified whenever we post a new video. We are helping people from all over when it comes to finding the best places and neighborhoods to live here, and we absolutely love it. So if you're even thinking about making a move and you need any assistance whatsoever, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, however you want to get a hold of us. We got your back when it comes to moving to the Phoenix Metro. All right, so today I wanted to share a new resource with you guys that can not only give you the most up-to-date information on what's going on daily here in the Phoenix housing market, but also the most targeted info when it comes to the real estate market. There are a lot of people putting out content using data that might give you a high level overview of what's happening here in Arizona, but there are so many factors to consider. And I think if you're just relying on that high level overview, you could end up making a decision that would cost you a lot of money. So let's dive into it and I'll kind of walk you through why I think this info could be helpful for you. And make sure to stick around to the end because I'm gonna be providing you free access to this same data that you can go look up on your own. So stick around, and I'll give you a link for that. So let me set this up for you guys a little bit because I think it's important to kind of go through the chain of events that happens when we start seeing some of this information regarding a crash. This is kind of the, you know, uh, one of the big headlines this week as far as Goldman Sachs talking about um, four cities, including the Phoenix market that will suffer a 2008 crash. This came originally from the New York Post um, talking about a uh, b basically a note to clients. So they have notes to clients that Goldman Sachs has. New York Post got a hold of it. Uh, posted it, and then it becomes a viral topic that everybody just gets a hold of and talks about it. So here it is in Arizona, Phoenix housing market could bring uh, prices down 25%. Uh, same thing here, Phoenix, one of four U.S. cities to see housing crash similar to 2008. Um, Goldman Sachs issues huge housing market crash alert. So it just snowballs and you start to see this effect and then obviously you start to see it on YouTube, everybody grabs a hold of those headlines and start, wants to talk about it because that's what gets the clicks, that's what gets the views. People want to know what's going on um, with this situation. But if you go back to this original article on the New York Post and you start to kind of read through it, it really doesn't tell you that much information that's super helpful. And and I think, again, to my point when I was going through this before, if you start to hear some of the new headlines that are coming out for January right now, you're starting to hear a little bit different tune. Let me show you some other stuff. So on the other side of the coin is now you're seeing some of these new articles talking about demand heating up, demand rising, the housing market kind of turning around a little bit for what we're seeing here in January. I'm pulling national news, but this is happening in Phoenix and you'll kind of see it. I'll bring up uh, some data to, to show that too. So um, here is one from Fox Business talking about U.S. U.S. housing market shows early signs of recovery. You go over to Bloomberg, they have housing demand climbs as U.S. market starts to show signs of life. And I'm, I'm pulling this, all this stuff is within the last week. 
and um, the housing market wakes from the dead. This is from Axios. So here are you know some some other things that you're seeing that are also being posted. You're probably also seeing uh, videos being made on YouTube from people who are trying to defend what's going on in the housing market. So again, kind of confusing. So then we start to have to look at the data here in Phoenix. And uh, a lot of agents use the Cromper Report. I'm a fan of the Cromper Report. It's something that we like to kind of share um, with the, the people that are working with us in order to kind of help navigate it. Um, let's take a look at what's going on here. You know, as of the end of the month here in January, we ha now have a market index that is 115.1. We see demand going up from where it has been here at the 76 level. Supply continues to go down. Not what anybody was expecting. I, I definitely was more thinking that with us going into the end of January, early part of February, we would start to see inventory levels go up to help um, with you know trying to, to take advantage of what is going on here over the next couple of weeks. We have a lot of crazy stuff happening between uh, the Phoenix Open and the Super Bowl and then spring training coming up. It's a great time, uh, you know, for most people, if, if they're thinking about listing their house, they should. And we're just not seeing it happening as of yet. So that is kind of what we're seeing. We're seeing demand pick up and we're seeing supply just kind of stay at this little kind of area that is causing some challenges. So this is where I really want to help you guys kind of give this info, like Cromford is good, but most people don't have access to it. So I wanna give you guys access to something that you can see and look at on a regular basis. So that brings us to this. This is a uh, another data-driven site to help you navigate the market, help you understand what's going on and uh, really determine what's going on with the market in real time so you can decide uh, what's right for you and kind of eliminate all the garbage headlines that are out there that really might not make sense for your situation. So um, this is a company I've partnered with. It's called Altos. And I find this to be a, a pretty um, easy tool to navigate, help you understand what's going on in the market. And, and, you know, again, one of the biggest benefits is that I can share this with you and you can go on your own and you can look at it on your own and you can have access to it um, so that you can kind of see what's going on, not only here in Arizona, but from wherever you're coming from. So if you're coming from California and you want to plug in your zip code, you can see what's going on in the market there. If you're coming from the East Coast um, out in Chicago, you can plug in your market. Wherever you're coming from, you can use this link and kind of figure out what's going on in your market to kind of figure out, you know, um, number one, how it could help you and kind of understand what this information does. The big thing between this and with... Um, like the Cromper report is this only takes listing info. So it's only going to give you info based on what's currently happening. So let's take, for example, I'm going to give you guys a link to Maricopa County. Um, and then you can kind of go in and figure out what area makes right or makes the most sense for you. But if we go in here and we're looking at Maricopa County in general, it's going to give you the median list price here at 530. Um, it's going to give a market action index similar to the Cromford index. This has it at 38, 38, which gives a slight seller's advantage similar to what the Cromford index is showing. And then it also kind of really takes you through these trends. And these are the things that I think are helpful. This goes back, this table here, the real-time market profile will go back 16 weeks here. So you can kind of scan through, take a look. You can look at the median list price from all the way back in October last year. You can see it dip down in November, December timeframe. And then you can kind of see it start to trickle back up here in January. We're seeing that same trend in a lot of them when it comes to the median price of new listings, price per square foot kind of dip down and then start to go back up. You see average days on market. Now this is one to keep an eye on. Average days on market is still fairly high right now. So that can be helpful when it comes to buying median days on market. And then you look at stuff as far as prices decreased. Um, this tells a lot about what's happening with um, listings that are still super high. A lot of people ask me how the market is, and it really is broken up in my mind into two segments. So you've got you've got about eighty percent of the market that is, in my mind, still overpriced that needs to come down, um, and you've got twenty percent of the market which is in high demand that everybody wants that could still potentially get multiple offers. So. We're in this kind of weird zone where you know, when you break it down into those two segments, the numbers get skewed. But all these, I think, can be super helpful. You kind of come down, you can see trends going back to like February 2020 to look at prices. You can look at average days on market, price per square foot. 
you can have a lot of fun with this if you are somebody who likes to analyze the data and really understand what's going on. And I think from my perspective, the why I want to share this with you is number one, you can see trends that um, have nothing to do with sold pricing. So if we're in a situation where, you know, things are changing rapidly, then you'll know how to uh, operate it. And this is all this is all real-time info. It's not lagging information. So the information from last month um, makes doesn't really mean anything if you're looking at what's going on currently today. So you also got market segments. I really like this as well because if you are looking in a particular price point, you can kind of focus on that. So let's go in here. We'll t look at the market segments. This kind of breaks it down into particular price points. So if you're like, hey, I'm looking at something in the four to 600 range, you can kind of go in here and then you can start really looking at how things have changed. And let's just take that off of here. So this lower, let's look at this 469 one. This is kind of how things have operated in that price point um, over the past three years. So it really gives you a lot of details to kind of help out, take a look at. And then um, the one thing that I think in my mind is super helpful is you can start breaking it down by zip code. But let's do this first. Let's break it down just by a city. And I'm going to go in. I know a lot of people who are looking to make the move here are interested in Scottsdale. So let's just pull up Scottsdale um, for you guys so you can see it from just a city perspective. This eliminates all the other cities. So if you're like, hey, I'm looking to make a move to Scottsdale. Now you can kind of look around, see the differences, see what the action index is here. Kind of look at what the history of prices looks like over the past three years. Take a look at the market segments as far as you know, the, the bottom end of, you know, finding a home in Scottsdale is going to be in the average, you know, or median list price around 750. And then on the high end is going to be closer to three and a half mil. So you can kind of start to pick your um, pricing info to kind of get a general idea on what makes sense for you when it comes to Scottsdale. Um, and then if you were to, you know, really break it down, then you can start getting into zip code. So let's just go into, you know, 85251. This is the area um, around Old Town Scottsdale. This area can be a little bit older. It's very popular for uh, vacation rentals and that type of thing, but you're not going to be looking in that super high end um, multi million dollar price point. You're going to start looking at a little bit different area. So this again is what I like when you kind of, you can kind of take a look at cities. If you're interested in cities, kind of break that down and then you can really dial in by neighborhood so you can see what's right for you and how, how things are trending as far as what's going on. So let me just give you like a real example on how you can use this to, you know, help yourself And that. And I'm going to bring up the zip code of 85248. This is down in Chandler. It's in the area around like Ocotillo and Fulton Ranch. So I've got some clients right now actually that are looking in Chandler, want to be in that area or are looking in, you know, somewhere in the six to 800 K price point. So let's kind of dive into that and say, okay, if I'm looking for a specific area and I want to know, like, is it the right time? time or what's going on, this makes sense for me to do. So if you come in, you look at the action index here, the market action index, it's at 37. This last month was much lower. It was much closer to being in that buyer's market realm. Now it's kind of raising a little bit. We're seeing that that demand that we talked about earlier, the demand kind of popping up a little bit with the supply going down. You, you look at inventory here. Let's look at, and again, this breaks it down even to houses. This is single family homes versus condos. So, so when you look at this inventory here, you can kind of see the single family homes, how they've kind of started to go down as far as the, the supply goes as we've gotten into the end of the year and going into January. That is creating a lot of this extra, or, or that's, that is what's causing the prices to kind of stay you know, stable in where they're at especially the demand going up. So you're looking at the median list prices come down a little bit from December, maybe start to increase a little bit here. Price per square foot has definitely kind of popped up over the last couple of weeks. Average days on market is starting to come down here. Price decreases are starting to come down. So all these are signs of the demand coming back and being in a market where you have to be a little bit more competitive. You can also look at the rent. So when you're kind of comparing, should I rent versus should I buy? You can kind of start looking at that now. We're seeing, we're actually seeing some of the rental prices come down. So there are some rentals out there giving people second options. You're looking at, 
median list price. Again, this is for, let's take out the segments here. You can kind of go through, take a look. If you really want to focus on one particular time frame. so let's say you just want to look at February 21 through February 22, you can kind of see how things changed when it comes to that. Um, all these can give you signs of what's happening in your particular situation. So that's why I'm a fan of it for sure. All right, so hopefully that info was helpful for you guys. If you are interested in how you can get free access to that same information that you can look up and review on your own, let, make sure to reach out to me or check out the link below where you can get access to that. I am partnering with this company to give you free access um, for this info that I think can be really helpful for your specific situation. If you have any questions for us, definitely reach out to us. We're here to help guide you when it comes to what's going on here in the Phoenix housing market and also uh, the best places and neighborhoods to live here. We absolutely love it. So if you're thinking about making a move and you need any assistance whatsoever, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, however you want to get a hold of us. We got your back. And until the next video, we'll catch you later.